Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. This is my review of the Logitech Yeti Orb. It costs about $60, and I did buy this mic with my own money. If you want to check it out, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Down there, you will also find all of my recording settings, as well as in the doobly-doo. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Not today, Satan. <laughs> well, would you look at that? You get the microphone. You also get a desktop stand, a two meter USB-C to USB-A cable, and a tiny bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone really does not instill confidence at all. It has an all plastic construction, which feels pretty cheap. On the back, you have the USB-C port to connect this to your device. On the bottom, you have two quarter inch 20 threads, which are the standard camera tripod threading, and they have two of them so you can adjust the angle of this microphone on your desk. And if you care about it, this microphone is made in China. I'm not gonna read all of the specs to you, but I will have them up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look. And all of the specs that I could find will also be listed in the description in case you want to dive a little bit deeper. Now I am spinning around the Yeti Orb to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now let's see how this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto, pals. Now I am right on top of the Yeti orb and I am almost clipping and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about six inches off with the mic pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it's sounding. Now about one foot away from the Yeti orb, about two feet away from the Yeti orb, and about four feet away from the Logitech G Yeti orb. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gamers, now I'm clickety clacking on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the Yeti orb sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now here is how the Yeti orb sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated alien spacecraft. I am also incredibly annoying, so I am going to tap on the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I have the microphone on the provided tripod and it is set directly on my desk about 10 to 12 inches away from my mouth. Here is how it sounds in this situation. If I were to tap on my desk, here is how much of that noise it would pick up. And for comparison's sake, here is how much of that noise it rejects when it is on a desk-mounted boom arm. And while the microphone is on the tripod, if I type on a clicky keyboard, here is how much of that noise it picks up. And again, for comparison, here is how much of the noise it rejects when it is much closer to my mouth on a boom arm. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a couple other options that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and understand how it sounds within the context of the market. Starting on the Yeti Orb, 6 inches off, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, input level set at 2%, and here's how it sounds. Starting on the Samson Go mic, I am 6 inches off, with my input level set at 20%, recording 16-bit, 48 kilohertz on the cardioid polar pattern. This microphone costs about $40, and here is how this sounds compared to the Yeti Orb. Back on the Yeti Orb for a palate cleanser, all of the processing is turned off and here's how it sounds. Let's go to the next mic. Now I am on the Razer Siren Mini, 6 inches off with my input level set at 69%, not going to make any jokes, recording 16-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone also goes for about $40 and here is how this sounds compared to the raw Yeti Orb. 
Here we are back on the Yeti Orb. Nothing has changed. And here is another palette cleanser. Let's hear some more. Now I am on the HyperX solo cast about six inches off. My input gain or input level is set at 51%, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $60. And here is how it sounds compared to the Logitech Gaming G Yeti Orb. All right, we're back on the Yeti Orb. The lighting is still green. The processing is still off. Check the lower third and let's jump to another mic. Next, I am on the blue snowball again, six inches off with my input level set at about 46% on the cardioid polar pattern, recording 16 bit 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs between 40 and $70 at this point. And here is how it sounds compared to its spiritual successor, if you could call it that. Let's do some more. I believe we are halfway through the comparison section, so here is the fifth palette cleanser on the Yeti Orb. Let's go to the next one. Next up, I am on the Rode NT-USB Mini, about six inches off. My input level is set at about 15%, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. None of the available Aphex processing is engaged. This microphone costs about $100, and here is how it sounds compared to the Yeti. Here we are on another palate cleanser to clear out your ear holes. Listen to how it sounds, and let's hear how another microphone sounds. Next up, I am on the Blue Yeti Nano, about six inches off on the cardioid polar pattern. Input level set at 24%, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. All of the Blue Voice software or processing is turned off, and this goes for about $100. This is how it sounds compared to the Yeti Orb. Hey, we're back on the Yeti Orb, and this is the penultimate palette cleanser, I believe. Get a good feel for it. Let's jump to the second to last mic. Next up, I am on the Logitech Blue Yeti GX, about six inches off. Input level set at 59%. All of the Blue Voice processing is disengaged. I'm recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This mic costs about $150, and here is how it compares to the Yeti Orb, which is quite a bit cheaper. And you all know what the final microphone is going to be, so here is your final palette cleanser on the Yeti Orb. Are you sick of it? Let's jump to the last microphone right. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI, about six inches off. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter engaged, running XLR to XLR into the focus right, 18i 22nd gen, 48 volts on, gain set at 12 o'clock, recording 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Did I cover everything? This microphone costs about $3,700. This is not a fair comparison. This is included just to be a control from video to video. But there you go. Those are all of the comparisons. Which one did you like best? Let's go ahead and jump to the music test now. like a thousand years since I've had you near me, felt you near me. And since I made this choice, I swore I'd never let you in my life again. But here I am, waiting for a slice. 
I bet you thought that was about something different, but nope, it's about pizza again because I love pizza and I miss it. I am a typical pop punk kid. I love pizza. I hate this town and my friends don't like me. Up on screen, I have the Logitech G-Hub software, and this isn't going to be a full walkthrough. This is just going to be a quick overview. If you want a full tutorial and walkthrough, I have that video on Podcastage 2. I'll link it in the description as well as the pinned comment. But in this app, you have three separate tabs. First being microphone. This is where you make all the adjustments to the microphone as well as the processing for the mic. You have a sampler pad in case you want to use some samples. And then you have light sync, which allows you to adjust the color as well as the effect of the lighting on the microphone. For this video, I don't care about the lighting or the sampler, so let's jump back to microphone. And now I have enabled the blue voice setting, and this turns on the processing for the microphone. You can adjust your microphone's input gain, the output level. You have the ability to add some EQ, and then you have signal cleanup. So you can do noise reduction, a noise gate, a compressor, a de-esser, a deplosive, and a limiter. But that is just a brief overview of what this does. Like I mentioned, full walkthrough and tutorial on Podcastage 2. And just to show you how the gain staging works on Windows, blue voice is off and my input gain is set at 40%. And if we look at the meters, we're peaking between minus 18 and minus 12 dB. So the gain staging on Windows seems to be significantly better and much more appropriate. Now I know what you're all thinking. Bandrew, you're not gonna like that microphone. Well, you would be right. For the most part, that is absolutely true. I do not like this microphone. But first up, as far as pros, I thought the microphone did a decent job at rejecting plosives. I also thought it performed pretty decently in the untreated space. As far as the mid frequencies on this microphone go, they're less offensive than that of the original Blue Snowball. At 60 bucks, it's also kind of affordable. And as far as the conversion goes, you're getting 24-bit 48 kilohertz. But then as far as cons, if you're using this microphone on a Mac, the gain staging is completely out of whack because with my input level set at 2%, there is not enough headroom and I am regularly almost or even actually clipping. This isn't an issue on Windows, but on Mac, this is a huge issue. Also on the provided desktop stand, it does a terrible job at shock rejection. And there is no headphone port, so you are not getting any kind of zero latency monitoring. So you won't be able to tell if you're popping it, if you're clipping, or if anything's going wrong in real time. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Yeti Orb? As far as the overall sound, I would say that it has a pretty weak bass section. It doesn't offer too much oomph or body or support down there. Then you get more of a mid forward sound. This is a mid focused sounding microphone, a little bit congested, but there are significantly worse. And then when we get to the upper frequencies, I wouldn't say that it's dark or rolled off, but I would say that it sounds low detail. Compared to some of the other alternatives out there, it just doesn't have that same typical boost in the treble and air frequency, so it does come across sounding a bit duller than some of the other options. On electric guitar, I found that it lacked bass. It was very mid forward and then the top end wasn't very prominent. I did kind of like it on the cleanish guitar, but for distorted guitar, I didn't think it worked at all. On the acoustic guitar, I was not a fan of it. I didn't think it had enough body. It was too mid forward and it lacked a lot of detail in the upper frequencies unless you are really digging into the strings to bring out some top end information from the guitar. For singing vocals, it's a very similar story. It was lacking in the bass frequencies. It came across more mid forward and a touch congested. And then in the upper frequencies, it lacked that sheen and articulation that a lot of people look for for singing microphones. So I don't think it's the best fit for that application. And finally, for spoken word, it is identical here. It lacks a lot in the bass. If you're looking solely for intelligibility, that can be a good thing because you don't have to worry about muddiness. But if you want a balanced sounding recording, 
that's going to be a bad thing. Then it is a more mid-dominant sounding microphone. And in the upper mids and treble, I heard a bit of grit. It's not the worst that I've heard at this price point, but overall, I found it a little bit unpleasing and just not the best sound. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Logitech Yeti Orb? Kind of and no. Let's start with a no. If you're using a Mac computer, I would say no. I don't think that having your gain set at 2% and still being at risk of clipping is acceptable. There is just not sufficient headroom. If they roll out a firmware update that resolves this, I will pin a comment addressing that, and I'll make a follow-up on Podcastage 2. But as of February 2024, if you use Mac, the answer is no. But then we get to the kind of recommendation. There is just a lot of competition for USB mics between $30 and $70, and the recommendation really comes down to your use case and what kind of feature set you want. If you're just looking for a simple plug-and-play good-sounding mic, the Samson Go mic is a great option. If you want that capacitive mute button, the HyperX SoloCast is great. But if you want that processing, that Blue Voice software, this makes it pretty darn affordable compared to the Yeti GX, which I don't think sounds significantly better than this. So for 60 bucks, if that's the feature set you're looking for, that is significantly better than paying 150 bucks for the Yeti GX. But if you're just looking for a raw, good sounding microphone, I think there are better options out there at a similar and even lower price. That's all that I've got for you today. If you found this video fun, interesting or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. Videos like this where I buy the gear to review it are made possible by the support of members of this channel. So a huge thank you to them and thank you to you for coming by, watching and listening. I appreciate you, I love you. I'll talk to you later, bye-bye. Whoa, whoa.